What's up guys? Today we have a super exciting thing. We're making white truffle pasta. These actually came overnight from Italy and they were freshly dug by truffle sniffing pigs. This is the biggest white truffle I've ever seen. And I'll just start by saying that the second you open this box, just the pungency alone is incredible. It smells almost kind of garlicky. You get like that umami blast and it fills the entire room with truffle smell. This only lasts about three days for that really amazing top-notch smell and after that it declines pretty quickly so you really want to use these while they're fresh. This one white truffle right here is probably worth about a thousand dollars. Probably about a six ounce white truffle. Let's cook some white truffle pasta. So to make our pasta I'm going to start with my really simple base recipe. So first just two cups of all-purpose flour. I'll dump that right out in the center of my cutting board. Then I'll take my bowl and I'll just gently press this into my flour and make a nice little well in the middle. Crack three whole eggs into here. And then I'm also gonna add two more yolks, not only for color, but also kind of to bind it just a little bit better together. Then I'll go two tablespoons of white truffle oil. I'm actually doing this instead of olive oil to get that extra truffle punch in my pasta itself. And then just a small pinch of salt. Now to start folding this together, I'm just gonna pierce all of my egg yolks and then slowly start whisking this together. But don't let it break the outside of our well. I find that kind of lifting it up as you whisk it helps to make sure it's not gonna splat on the outside. And once my egg is evenly mixed, I'm just gonna slowly start pulling in the edges of my flour and mixing that into my egg. If your egg does break through, just close your well and try to scoop it all back in to make sure it doesn't leak out too far. And now I'm gonna take my bench scraper because it's thick enough at this point where I can start messing around with it a bit easier and just scoop that all together to start incorporating it together. And now once we've gotten to the point where we can kind of put our hands in there and mix it together by hand, I'm just gonna go in and start slowly folding the dough together. This is our last step in this process. And obviously if you want, you can use a machine and put it in a mixer or whatever, but this is just a more fun kind of rustic way of doing it that I just have always loved. I can already smell all the truffle coming out of here, which is really exciting. And to knead, you're basically just pushing the dough into itself each time, one after the next, until it's really, really kind of smooth and ready to be rested in the fridge. So once I've kneaded my dough for a little while, it should look nice and smooth, super clean on the outside. I'm gonna take it down and just cover this with a little bit of saran wrap, and I'll toss it in the fridge to rest for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. All right, so we'll set up our pasta maker, and then a quick little flouring right over the top of it. You always wanna be flouring your pasta machine, whatever it is, if it's a hand crank, whatever flour in there just make sure there's plenty for the pasta dough to really smoothly go through. I've just taken my dough out of the fridge. It's been resting for about 25 minutes. I'll take this off. At this point, it should be very, very smooth and it's gonna be a little bit easier to work with. I want it to just be kind of long enough and thin enough that I can slowly start fitting it through my pasta machine. Then I'll start my pasta machine on the widest setting. And if you want, you can even use a rolling pin to just roll this out just a tiny bit to make sure it'll be thin enough to roll it through the pasta machine that first time. Now I'll turn on my pasta maker here and gently feed my pasta dough through. So just keep flouring your dough a little bit lightly. You don't want to work too much flour into there, but just enough that it's not going to ever get stuck. And at some point I like to fold my pasta sheet together and then put those ends back here. This just makes a much smoother dough, push out all the air bubbles, everything like that, and it works out perfectly. And again, just keep lightly dusting and flouring your dough. You don't want anything to stick together. Once you've run through this a couple times, tighten this up a little bit and go through the next round. And this will allow us to get the dough just a little bit thinner. We're slowly gonna go up the increments and make it thinner and thinner each time. Don't touch the dough when it's going in an automatic machine like this. Let it do the work, let it kind of go through itself. Otherwise you may stretch it out in certain parts. You want it all to be the same kind of equal, even consistency all the way through. Just remember, pasta expands a lot as it sucks in that water and you cook it. So make sure you start it off really thin. Now I'm up on number five and I'll put my dough through again. And now I'm going to number six and this will be my last run through. So make sure it's well lined up and straight on and just feed your pasta into there. You just have to make sure it's going in straight into the machine. And this is perfect. So now look, we have this beautiful, silky, pasta sheet, I can layer this up on itself. If you're gentle with it and sort of use the back of your hands, it'll really nicely kind of curl up on itself. So because it's so long, I'm gonna actually cut right through the middle of it and that way I have two nice long pasta sheets and then I can take them up and just go ahead and sort of layer these back onto themselves. Make sure there's a little bit of flour because they will stick together. But I'm gonna layer these on themselves while we cut them into the right shape here. So now to cut this, I've just changed off the head on my pasta maker. I'll turn this on, I made sure to flour it just as I did with the other thing and I'll start feeding this through very slowly and carefully. And while this goes, we have to cut it as it comes out of the machine. So let's slowly let this layer onto itself for a second. And then once we get to the point where we're happy with it, we'll just cut it and put it in its own individual nice portion. If you want, you can even turn off your machine, go ahead and make that quick little cut, and then take your pasta and just sort of bunch that up by itself. And that's 
one of your nice little rounds of pasta. So our key step when we're making pasta is to make sure we salt our water just like the ocean. So once our water's boiling, we can put some more pasta in here and just sort of very gently move that around. It's gonna cook really fast, maybe like three minutes or so just because it's this fresh pasta. It's not all dried out. So we have to be really careful when we cook this. And I love my pasta al dente. So it's almost just like a quick shock in this hot water and then we take it out and we're good. And I don't like to time my pasta so just try to use the taste test method. Let it go for a couple minutes, give it a little taste. Once you're happy with it, that's great. Take it out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and strain it. And then there's still a lot of pasta water in here. So I'm gonna shake this for just a second. So I'm gonna leave my pasta off to the side for a sec. Then I'll go a little bit of white truffle butter. This is gonna be the base of our sauce for our pasta. We wanna make it very simple. And once my truffle butter is just about melted, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of my pasta water in here too. And that's just a good little trick to keep all of that really good pasta flavor and also kind of emulsify, bring together your sauce here. So once this is one nice, really smooth consistency, I'm gonna go ahead, just toss all my pasta right back in here. And we don't need the pasta water anymore, so we're all set, but we'll quickly try to mix this up and fold it into the pasta. And then I wanna go a little bit of black pepper just to kind of balance out this dish just a teeny bit here. I'll spin my pasta here just to make it look nice when I'm plating it. Then I'll bring this over to the center of my plate and just kind of gently put it down, nice and high and tight. Then I'll just take a nice big hunk of my Parmesan cheese here and just grate some of that right over the top of my pasta. And last but not least, the most important part of this dish, my white truffle. So I have my white truffle shaver. This is just an important part of kind of giving that really, really fine shave to a truffle. You can see the inside of the truffle looks absolutely gorgeous. And I'll just do a few shaves over it, but I have to be careful here because I have to remember each shave of this is probably worth $30 or so. So I just have to be careful when I do this. And that right there is a beautiful white truffle pasta.